Hey there guys, it's Andrew Berg here, hope you've been doing well. Welcome to the 8th video of the MTCNA Router's version 7 playlist, where we will be specifically taking a look at how to upgrade our Router S firmware. Why do we want to do it? What's the advantages of it? How do we get those new cool features? Or how do we address potential security vulnerabilities? This is the video that's been covering that, so that you can see the different ways you can upgrade Router S firmware or software, and that you can just do it safely. So let's get into the video and see how we can upgrade Router's software. So I think the best place to start is actually just to bring up the Microtech documentation because this is what I use for my own labs or references whenever I wanna figure something out. And it's best to just get the information directly from the horse's mouth. So what I could do is just go onto my browser and then from the browser itself, you can go onto support and then just click on the documentation button. And then I highly, highly recommend that you just bookmark this because that's what I always tend to do. Now from here, we will be able to find out more about the stuff that we want to learn. So maybe I want to learn about packages. So I can just type that in the search field, packages. Sorry, I've got the caps lock on there. And then I can just open that up in a new tab, even though I've got it open there already, but let's just close them and pretend I didn't have it open. And maybe we want to learn more about the firmware because if you're not aware, there's actually two different things when people talk about upgrading firmware for Microtech. There is Router OS, which is the operating system, which is the thing that we as administrators interact with. We use Winbox or Webfig or SSH, we connect onto the Microtech, and then the stuff that we see and we configure and move around and troubleshoot on, that is Router OS, all right? However, there is an underlying firmware as well known as the router board firmware it's not something that we really interact with but it is worth mentioning that from the beginning so if i just go down i can see there is a router board section i'll open that up as well and now we can see this is going to just give us some more information about where you can find your router boards firmware and how you can go about upgrading it but it's a very very easy and quick process I just want to highlight the packages section because this is actually what Microtech is going to be testing you a lot of on the exam. And what you need to understand is Microtech is built on top of different varying packages as well. However, with the release of version 7, they've actually consolidated or aggregated most of these packages into a single package called Router OS. Whereas before you had different stuff for like system and firewall and security and all those type of things it's, it's all just been merged or smooshed into one general package but there are more packages there's actually extra packages that you can install in your marketing i've showcased stuff on this channel before like zero tier that is a completely separate package that we can run there's also stuff like containers that you can run separately so we have this virtualization almost inside of our marketing happening it's really really cool of the extended packages that you can just install in order to improve or increase the features or functionality of your marketing so <laughs> that's that's kind of the, what I just wanted to mention when it comes to the documentation so please read through this bookmark it again it is very useful information but I want to show you how you can go about upgrading your stuff so let's quickly go on to Winbox and the first thing that I want to stress from Winbox and this is quite nice if we look at our neighbors we can see I've got two separate neighbors here one being my HAP AX3 that I use inside my office and I'm always connected to it or we've got this RB931, which is just a HAP Mini that I got from Normus a couple of years ago at a Microtech user meetup. Now, it's very useful that from Winbox, we can actually see what version the Microtech is running. We can even see the date associated with the version. So here I can see my HAP AX3 is running version 7.15.1, and it is the stable build. And similarly, I can see that my HAP Mini is running version 7.11.2, which is also the stable build, but we can see that is a much older build as well. Now this is great information for us because now I know that both of these versions might be a bit outdated, especially the HAP Mini, and it should probably be time for a bit of an upgrade. So let's just first connect onto my HAP AX3. So I can show you the steps when it comes to upgrading our router S firmware. So once I've connected, let me just connect using the right credentials. Is that the right device? Apparently I was trying to connect onto the wrong one. So once I'm on the Microtech, this is actually so straightforward and easy to understand. Uh, so what we could do is just go into the system and from the system, we could go onto our packages. And then with the packages, we can actually see which packages have already been installed on the Microtech. So here I see I'm running some container package and I'm using a zero tier package, which are extra packages. And there we can see our router S and our Wi-Fi QCOM packages as well. Now there are certain 
actions that you can run inside of here as well. So maybe you're troubleshooting some issue and this I've seen happen with the older version of Microtech. It's not something you'll use really do with the new version, but you could disable some of the packages in order to just limit what is featured available on the Microtech or troubleshoot some stuff. But you definitely don't want to disable the router OS since that is the system itself and you're basically going to cause yourself some issues. I'm not even sure if you can. Let's try. Let me try and disable that. Uh, apparently you can so let, let's not do that i want to test it out and just see what happens but let's not tempt fate here so please don't disable your router as package however maybe you, you don't really want to use containers anymore so you can just click on disable and you'll see it says scheduled for disable so the moment you restart your microtech it will then boot up with that package disabled and again, if you want to enable it afterwards, you'll just click enable and then reboot the Microtech. There's a few extra things here you can do like uninstall or unschedule, which kind of just removes that schedule that was there. So again, if I click on disable and I click on the unschedule, it will just remove that schedule for thing, uh, schedule for disable. And then lastly, there is a bit of a downgrade here that you can do as well. Now the downgrade could be useful if you're running into some issues because you, you've accidentally installed a test build and there's some bugs in the test build. And you can just roll that back by doing a downgrade and the Microtech will just go into its file system, which is when we go to files. Here we can see basically a hard drive or disk for the Microtech and this is where many of your logs and stuff might get saved. So the moment we do that, the oldest Microtech file or router S system file in here, it will actually be downgraded to what you have stored in there. Now the most important part when it comes to upgrading your router S firmware or software is clicking on the check for updates button actually gives you this new pop-up where you can now perform a few things. Now I can see on the stable channel, I already have a couple of upgrades in a new version, namely version 7.15.3. And Microtech is so kind that they even list what they fixed in this new build. Now the interesting part is if you click on this channel, you can actually go into separate channels as well. Now it is worth noting, even though there is a long-term channel, there is currently no router is released for that, but everybody just kind of considers the stable build as the long-term release currently. Now, Microtech also has the development and testing channel. Now, I consider both to be roughly the same. Every time I go into either of these channels, it is the same thing, but you can just think of this as the new test builds that Microtech wants to deploy in the future that they're busy working on. And here I can see there is a version 7.16 release candidate four that's getting ready to be deployed pretty soon. I can install this actually on this Microtech right now, and I will have access to all of these changes that Microtech have made. And here we can see they've made a ton of changes. They've actually added some six to four functionality. There's a lot of BGP changes, some bridge changes. Wow, if I look at this list, this is actually quite a massive list that Microtech is going to be implementing. So. I actually want to test this stuff out right now, so I might just stop making, or after I've stopped making this video, I'm just going to lab all of this, to be honest. But here we can see Microtech is going to be adding a lot of different changes, but let's play it safe. Maybe this is our production network and we don't want all of these funky, weird changes that is still basically in beta. Then we can just go back to the stable build and now we have the option to either download or download and install the router S image or software version. Now it's worth noting that if you click on download, all that does is it's going to download the software on your Microtech, but it's going to keep itself running until you reboot your Microtech. When you boot it back up again, then it's going to boot into the new version of router S and everything will be hunky-dory. Now what I tend to do is I just tend to do the download and install. And this will automatically now just download the image from the Microtech site and it will reboot the Microtech the moment it's finished downloading to install the software as well. Now this is awesome and it can also be a bit of an issue because we need to make sure that we do this at a good time. We if the moment we do that, you're basically going to be dropping the connection. So we now need to wait for this Microtech to come back online again. But the moment it comes back online, we'll be able to see what new stuff has been added. Now I'm just gonna pause the video and then I'll resume the moment it boots back up again. All right, so my Microtech booted back up again and it automatically just reconnected, which was quite nice. Now here I can quickly just verify that my software has been upgraded by actually going into the system. And if I go back to packages, I can now see that all of my packages have been upgraded to version 7.15.3, which is very useful for us. So now I know I am on the latest build if I do a check for updates again. 
we can confirm I'm on the latest install build. So I don't need to worry about anything being a problem for me with this Microtech. Now, it is worth mentioning that if we do the installation in this manner, that this all requires an internet connection. So you need to make sure that you can get out to the internet and that you do have DNS working. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to basically do any of that. Now, the other point that I want to stress is the router board firmware, because if I go into system, here we can find router board and this is also basically just a click one click thing that we can do here we can see what the factory firmware is for this device we can see what the current firmware is that's running which is actually quite old as well which i should have also upgraded and here's the latest upgrade firmware build which is going to kind of be the same firmware build as router is so to upgrade this it's as easy as just clicking on the upgrade button click on ok but the moment that's been done it says please reboot for changes to take effect so now I can prompt the reboot by either just going into our terminal quickly, or I can just click on system. And I think there is a reboot option there. So I can just reboot the market quickly. And then the moment that's been rebooted, I should boot up with the latest version of the router firmware as well. All right, so our market is back online and I can just quickly verify that the firmware has upgraded by going back into system and firmware and or router board. And here we can see what the firmware is now. Now all of this you can also just quickly check on from the terminal as well. So I'll just open up a terminal window from my Microtech. Let's just uh, zoom in a little bit, teensy weensy bit. And then what I could do is just do a system packages. And then from the package here you have the same functionality or commands. We can now also do stuff like a update and I can do a check for updates. And then this will kind of just do the exact same thing that was in that box. We can now see if there is any update. And if there was one, then you could do something like a install or download and install option as well. It's also worth noting that you can change your channels here. So you could do something like a uh, set channel equals and you could change the channel to something like the testing build. And now if I run the same command again to check for updates, it's actually going to find that new software version available for us. So then if I wanted to update it, if we just tab this, we can now just do either download or we can do an install. And then that would just install us to the latest build for the Microtech. Similarly, if we want to view our router board firmware, we can go system router board. We could just print this out and then this will tell us exactly what our router board firmware is currently. And we could just backspace this. And if we wanted to upgrade it, it's as easy as just doing a system router board upgrade and then following along with the prompt. Now that's from the command line. Now let's say we wanted to do this in a more manual fashion and maybe we don't have the internet connectivity. Microtech obviously allows you to upgrade your firmware like that as well. So what I'm going to do is just quickly disconnect and then I'll reconnect on my HAP Mini to do this manually. And then I will select my HAP Mini and I don't think I've got a password set on this device. It's still, this device was running version six when I got it and the default factory stuff just is admin blank. So I should set a password for this as well. And now I can actually quickly also just figure out what packages I'm currently using. So if I go into my system packages, we can see exactly what package we're currently on. Now let's say I wanted to upgrade this package manually. So what I could do is just go onto the Microtech webpage. So I could go into my browser, Go microtech.com, navigate to software, and then from software, I can now find the architecture for my Microtech. Now you'll notice there is main package, which is kind of router S itself that you want to upgrade, or there are extra packages. Now when you download extra packages, it will download all of the extra packages for that architecture, and then you can kind of just copy in whichever ones you want, and then reboot your Microtech in order to gain access to those added functionality or features. Now I first need to determine what is my HAP Mini's architecture. So if I go back into Winbox quickly, I can actually see at the bottom, it tells me this is SMIPS. So I know this is the architecture that I should use. If I go back into the Microtech website, I can now just find the SMIPS and I know it is the main package. And let's be a bit daring. Let's say we want to download this new test build. I could just download this. It will now save it onto my computer. I can see this is 6.8 meg large. So that's really a small file. And now to upgrade this manually, it's actually as easy as dragging and dropping stuff. So I'm just going to minimize that. I'll open Winbox. 
And once Winbox is open, I'll just navigate to the Files tab. And from the files, I can just drag and drop the new router is package inside of the file system. So what I'll do is I've just downloaded it. I just need to find it now. All right, so what I'm just gonna do is just drag and drop this into my Microtik. So I'll grab the file, pop it into the Microtik. It's busy copying. And then the moment this copy has been finished, I can just reboot the Microtik and it will boot up with the latest version of router S. Now note, this does not upgrade the router firmware. Now I'm just going to wait for this to finish so that we can reboot the device and then we can verify that it actually boots into the new build. So now that that has finished, let's just quickly reboot our Microtik. I'll just go into the terminal for this. Then I can just do a quick system reboot. Say yes. And once the Microtik boots back up, it should be running the new version for router S at least. So let's see. All right, so my Microtik has reconnected. And I can actually see it is using the new 7.16 RC4 testing build. But we can also just again verify that by going into our system and packages. And now we know what version this Microtech is running as well. So this is very nice. All right, before we end off the video, I just quickly want to cover the extra packages again, because this is also just quite useful to see. So what we could do is go back onto the Microtech site and I could maybe download the extra packages for my SMIPS device. So let's quickly see what we have. I'm just going to make sure that I download for the current architecture or software version they're on. So let's download this. And if I open this up, we can actually see what which extra packages exist for this Microtech. Uh, let me just go back into here. So here we can see there is actually the TR069 client that you can use as an extra package, or there is a wireless extra package as well which is just like extended functionality on the wireless chip as well. So if we quickly just want to get this installed on the Microtech as well, it's also just as quickly or quick and easy as dragging and dropping them onto the Microtech. So I can go back into the file system. Let's just drag and drop them into the Microtech quickly. And so now that they've been added onto the Microtech, again, this is as quick and easy as just rebooting our Microtech. You'll even notice that after we rebooted the Microtech, that router S package that was on here, that's now kind of been wiped off of here and it's just been added onto the file or the system itself. So let's quickly reboot the Microtech again and see what happens. So if I do a system reboot. All right, so we're back on the Microtech and here I can already see we do have this TR069 option that has now been added which actually is quite useful for a few use cases, but not necessarily something that you, <laughs> that you want to deploy in your home network. Uh, but we've also got some extra wireless stuff. So this just kind of shows you how you can go about adding extra packages. Not all architectures just has two packages. I mean, if I go back onto my, if I go back onto the Microtech website, if I download the packages for my HAP AX3, which I think is running ARM64, let's just quickly make 100% sure. It might just also be plain ARM. So let's disconnect, reconnect onto my HAP, and then type in a password. And this is running ARM64. All right, so I can just go onto the ARM64 architecture. And if I download the extra packages for my 7.15.3 stable build, this is actually going to have a lot more options for us to go through. So if I just drag this across, here we can see, uh, <laughs> here we can see I've got stuff like the container package, the dude, extra Nick. That's uh, that sounds pretty cool. That's pretty new. I don't really know what that is. Uh, we've got GPS, Internet of Things, LoRa, Rose Storage, UPS, User Manager. Wi-Fi, QCOM, wireless, zero tier, all this other wonderful stuff. So this kind of just encapsulates everything that we can do with the file system, the packages, how to upgrade router S and the router S firmware. So this will be where I end off the video. I know there's a lot of information, but I just wanted to showcase how quick and easy it is to upgrade your router S firmware as well as the operating system. And again, there's some more nuances involved when we get to the net install bit. But this is a general approach on how you're going to upgrade your stuff. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll catch you in another video. See ya.